Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream tonight. Welcome to the attic. Um, my name's Carol. I want to thank you all for joining me this evening. If you've read the topic um, that I put up at the beginning of the live stream, we're going to talk about the Great Wagon Road and the Great Wagon Road Project. Um, I do have some other things in store at the end of the live stream, but I felt that it was important to share what the project was about and what all is going on with it right now, um, what techniques we use to research the project and, uh, and the road, and just bring you all up to speed on what we have going on. So let's say hi to me, and I see a couple of you already on here. Janet, looking forward to tonight's program. Welcome, Janet, and Donnie's here. Hello, welcome, Donnie. Thank you guys for joining us this evening. I'm also going to share some um, information concerning the Loyalist in North Carolina and some updates that are happening on the website that are coming up in February. I want to also send out a special thank you to all of the new subscribers on Piedmont Trails. Thank you so much for showing your support on what we do. Um, and, by, and by doing that, by subscribing to the channel, we greatly appreciate that. We really, really do. We're trying, we have a a goal set for this coming spring on YouTube to get a thousand subscribers so we can go live while we're out in the field researching. So thank you guys for, for hitting that subscribe button. Thank you so much. All right. The live chat is up and running. I can see your chats. Rick's here. Excited to be here. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for joining me. Just type your comments and your questions as we go. This is going to be kind of a quick, I just want to share everything that's associated with the Great Wagon Road Project and let you know what's going on behind the scenes and how we work. Um, so share your thoughts and opinions with me and, um, and share your suggestions too, because it's our history. It's all of our history together. So we're all in on this. All right, I'm going to share with you what the project has been up to for the past month. And for those of you who are not aware of the Great Wagon Road Project, it is a team of volunteers that have been working on identifying the Great Wagon Road and working towards the goal of National Historic Trail Recognition. And that is so important. That's our ultimate goal. And we, we're comprised of volunteers who have been working on this for nearly three years. The project started in 2019. The research team has been documenting and preserving and identifying the original route of the Great Wagon Road. There is a um, misconception about the Great Wagon Road in that, you know, that it changed and it did change. It changed often. But what we are striving to preserve is the original road. And so we're sticking to a certain time span in doing this. And it's primarily dating to the early 1740s through around 1770, 1775, till about the onset of the American Revolutionary War. And that research covers a lot of time period in association with the length of this road. It's amazing. The uh, members of the research team, which is our main um, research volunteers, this, this is our main researching team, they are multitaskers. And <laughs> let me... I got to repeat that they are multitaskers because we are constantly working in several different aspects of the road. It's sometimes difficult to quite understand exactly what our work contains. And it is a lot of work. And I can't stress that enough. It's so much work. It's a full time job just following all of the data and documenting all of the sources. Just that alone is a full-time job in filing and keeping it organized. We are talking about tens of thousands of records, maps, land deeds, surveys, court records, church records, personal diaries, manuscripts, books, family histories, military records, and more. On top of this, we are mapping every single section of that original row bed. We're talking about an area covering sections through seven states. This is huge. The states are Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. That's over 800 miles of history. 
that's a lot of information to research and prove. And we have to prove it. That's the ultimate goal to get national recognition. We have to prove the Great Wagon Road. The research takes us through many different levels of time periods and events. Our research includes Native American trails. It includes waterways, fords and ferries, early forts, taverns, inns, courthouses, road orders, overseers, family genealogy. It also covers the French and Indian War, 1754 to 1763. Queen Anne's War is also associated in with that. Lord Dunbar's War of 1774 in Virginia. King George's War, 1744 to 1748, and portions of the American Revolutionary War. Then we also researched the tools. And when I mention the tools, I mean the tools that were used to travel the road, the wagons, the carts, the foods that they carried, the clothing which they wore. All of this together enables us to learn even more about what it was like to travel the Great Wagon Road in different time periods. And lastly, we share the project. All of the volunteers share the project on social media, in-person speaking engagements, various articles, and live stream like what we're doing here tonight. The project also receives tons of requests, mainly through email correspondence, and most of the people seem to get in touch with us on the Piedmont Trails um, Dot com website because that's where the project is mainly stationed at but they also get in touch with us individually through facebook and other means of uh, communications inquiring about the great wagon road project or they may have information for us or they may suspect hey i've got a old road bed that's located on my property and it may be close to where the great wagon road was can you maybe come and check it out all of these communications back and forth with the project requires some member of the project to investigate it and to determine if or you know that segment of the road is part of it or if it's not or if it's an, a part of a, another old road and we have investigated some of these that have been sent to us and we have found new routes that we didn't know existed it's amazing so, like I said, then the research team has to investigate this data. The material is vast, and vast is a small word to use for the amount of material involved with this project. There are photos, there are videos, there's maps, there's notes, there's records. It amazes me to find so many discoveries that have not been deserved in any form at all. You know, going in, I, it's been many, many years since I was in school. And I can remember maybe a couple of chapters in studying American history where the Great Wagon Road was actually mentioned. Um, and that was it. There was nothing else that tied us to the importance of what the Great Wagon Road really stood for during that time period. And it's amazing for us to discover as as we as the team keeps moving forward and going through the records, sifting through it all, and, and finding new discoveries that have never we've never even heard of. It's amazing. So that's a little summary of the Great Wagon Road Project. For the past month, we have been working with a, a specific uh, piece of property located in Henry County, Virginia. It belonged to a uh, John Fre Frederick Miller. John Frederick Miller. His land deed consisted of 400 acres in Henry County, Virginia. His deed dates uh, 1756. Um, he, portions of his property run along uh, Spoon Creek, uh, Mayo River, and down towards the state line of Virginia, North Carolina. The reason why this property has become significant is we recently had a member of the research team to investigate Henry County um, and portions of Patrick County up in Virginia back in the fall. And we were analyzing and going through all of this data. We have are determined to, we pinpointed down a small area of where the original Fort Mayo was located. And that's what our prime um, 
reason for investigating this particular property is because the road ran through near right at Fort Mayo. We know this because of a particular journal of a famous uh, gentleman who was by the name of George Washington, who his, who in his journal mentions Fort Mayo and that he paid a visit there in the fall of 1756. So we are currently investigating that. And, and when we do this, when we find a deed, we, we analyze it, we break it apart. We map it completely on how it was and how it is today and how it sets in present day maps. And then we look back through all manuscript journals and everything that we can find to pinpoint down the actual location of what we're looking for, whether it be the roadbed or a landmark dwelling such as Fort Mayo. Then we try to get the, the, the actual, actual descriptions of the fort. They were made in certain descriptions, um, certain dimensions is what I'm trying to say. And we pinpoint that down with the location. Um, it's amazing to do that, but it's time consuming too. But it's fun to see how Mr. Miller's property appeared back then bordering Spoon Creek and Mayo River and how it appears today. Really amazing. Uh, we are also working with survey maps in this area that include Fort Trial. Fort Trial is a little bit north and east of where Fort Mayo stood. And Fort Trial lies along uh, Hickey's Road. And you can read more about John Hickey because we wrote a article about him on PiedmontTrails.com and about his ordinary that he operated along Hickey's Road, which joined and linked to the Great Wagon Road. We've just completed mapping the Wachovia tract of the Moravians in present-day Forsyth County. This is a huge tract of land consisting of 98,000 acres, just a little over 98,000 acres. And um, one of the members, David Tilly, has been able to successfully map this uh, on our map software system that we are currently storing all the Great Wagon Road information on. We were we did this by using several original surveys by William Churton, Churton, who actually performed the surveys in January 1753. Not all of Churton's original surveys have been located. Um, there are speculations that some of these are located in London, but we have not been able to confirm this. Um, I am assuming that these a couple that are missing are actually in the Moravian archives, but we're working to see if that's true. But that's what we do. We have to get those original surveys and that's what we go by. So we go by the land description written in the deed and we also go by what is actually on the survey, those little survey maps, okay? That's how we map this. One of my main tasks with the project is locating and documenting properties along the road. I'm the land deed reader. <laughs> And I record all of this information from these landees. And there's a reason why we do this. Um, land deeds are considered as a legal document. This is one of the best ways to prove the existence of the, of the Great Wagon Road. When you use a land deed, it's considered as a legal document. And it provides documentation whether it was near the road. Now, some have came to me and said, well, Carol, you know, not everybody called it the Great Wagon Road. And that's true. They didn't. But roads were not given names like they are today. Most of the time, if you lived in a particular area and, and the main road went by you, you just called it maybe the, that's the main road to Carolina. That's the road you want. That's the road you take. Um, so the land deeds provide proven documentation of the route of the road. And once you link these deeds together, all of a sudden the road is there. So that's one of my jobs with the project is identifying the um, land deeds and going through them and documenting them, organizing them, putting them in the files, reading them, deciphering them, and then handing them over to the mapping team. You know, families wanted to be near the colonial roads and they settled on the colonial roads. And the Great Wagon Road was among the most important. 
Oh, let's see here. I've got notes scattered everywhere. The project is also locating the original location of the first courthouse in Surrey County, North Carolina. Um, there's a reason why we're doing this too. The site is was selected was selected by a committee in Richmond in 1774. But the first court was held in a gentleman's name by the name of Gideon Wright. And he lived along the banks of the Yakin River. Gideon Wright, we've been really researching here lately because he also pertains to our loyalists in North Carolina. And we will have much more on Gideon Wright coming up soon in just the next few weeks concerning um, Richmond Courthouse, um, the early beginnings of Surrey County, uh, some of the inhabitants and settlers that were living in that particular area along the um, Yakin River going up to the Yellow Banks Ford right up above it and the ferry that was operated near Poindexter's family in that area. So we'll have much more on that coming up soon. Let's see. Let me stop a minute. It says Rick Side is how Rita's here. Excited to be here. Thank you, Rita. And Brian's here. I'm finally here. I'm a little late. Glad to have you, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us. We've um, things that we have proven along the Great Wagon Road so far. You know, the most I think one of the most important things to prove along the Great Wagon Road are water crossings or fords, um, because years later, a lot of these changed as the road deteriorated, and there was not much maintenance kept up with the road. So these fords, uh, original fords, changed to other fords. But there are many places along the road that we have proven, and one of these is the Pack Course Ford in Maryland. The road crossed there on the Potomac River for the early years of its existence. Later on, ferries were added, but many families still continued to use the Pack Course Ford all throughout the migration years, and there's a reason why, because it was free, and they didn't have to pay a ferry to get across. We've also proven the Dan River Ford in Stokes County, um, as is the Mayor River Ford Crossing also. We've proven that in from Virginia to North Carolina. Um, you know, the project works with thousands of organizations, societies, museums, county and state departments who guide us to specific records that we are in need of. This is a huge project. Um, we anticipated six years of work, which would have put us at 2025 and being completed. But with the pandemic in 2020, we are a little bit behind, and that's okay. The Great Wagon Road has waited patiently 278 years for recognition. So an additional year, if needed, will be just fine. It'll be just fine. The Great Wagon Road was the most inland western road for years and quickly, quickly became a major migration road during the mid-18th century. Many of the New Western roads emerged from the Great Wagon Road and allowed families to travel and settle in Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. The traffic on the Great Wagon Road started very small at first, but it didn't take long for soon groups of families were making their way south. The road naturally widened, and before long, wagons could pass each other back and forth, just like on a regular road. Many scholars and authors claim that the road comprised of mainly Germans and Scots, but we at the Great Wagon Road Project have learned that all types of people have traveled this road. And in my mind, that authenticates it um, as being the first national major highway and deserves to have national recognition. Basically, the route for the Great Wagon Road started... Hmm, there's questions still on this, but I'm just going to throw a date out there around 1741. The Lancaster Treaty was devised up in Pennsylvania in 1744. Um, primarily, it began in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but uh, over time, the road extended north, too. So we'll say Lancaster for now. It traveled through York County, um, traveling down towards Maryland. So it's winding its way through. Um, travels to the Potomac River, crossing the Pack Horse Ford, like I said, and into Virginia. Scatters portions of West Virginia, just a little. Traveling through Winchester in Virginia, then south um, 
to reach Roanoke. In between there is going through Leesburg, okay, and all there, and then crossing into the state boundary in North Carolina at the Mayo River. Travels primarily in a southern direction, uh, reaching present-day Mecklenburg County, and it enters into South Carolina there. Crosses the state in the south uh, direction in South Carolina, and then ends up at Augusta in Georgia. Now, in South Carolina, the um, road split, but the original route um, didn't split. And, and I'll have more on that probably at the this coming summer. But the original route didn't uh, split. All right, that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> the road was used daily, not just with migrating families, but with pack horse trains that were filled with supplies. Drovers were using the road that were carrying cattle, sheep, and swines to all different types of marketplaces, wherever they could get the best price is where they went. Supply wagons also traveled from smaller settlements traveling to the northern areas so that they could get certain supplies. The road holds so much history. The project has also found tons of family stories along the way, and I was keeping track of how many of these family stories that we were finding and lost track of those now. That's that, it's that many. Um, some have been proven correct. Some portions of them have been proven correct, and some have been totally been proven wrong. So I want you guys to share with me what you know about the Great Wagon Road. Um, share with me what you think the project, um, how we're doing with the project, and have we overlooked some, maybe something that I haven't mentioned to you of, of records and stuff um, or techniques that we're using? We are out in the field now more often. We're looking to uh, purchase more equipment and um, looking to hope to bring some of these videos live to you as we're out in the field, hopefully moving forward in this year. But let us know what you think. Let us know what, what you think about the Great Wagon Road. How many of you suspect that your family traveled the Great Wagon Road? You know, the project has traced hundreds of families traveling and living along the road. The time period spans mm, from 1735, give or take, to 1773 for right now. There were many families who chose to travel a different route. And so when you research, make sure, make sure you are following or make sure you know which road you're following is what I'm trying to say. You know, the Great Migration years involved so many families that were traveling. Not everyone traveled the Great Wagon Road. That was the most western road to take. It was the most rough road to take. The other roads were rough too, but the Great Wagon Road was really in bad shape. So not everyone traveled that. There are other roads. I'll give you an example. Like in Virginia, um, you have the King's Highway. You've got Trader's Path. Before Trader's Path, you've got Thick Pins Trace. you got Fall Line Road. And then you got the Great Wagon Road. Every one of these are separate individual routes. And they're traveling all in the basically the same direction, south, southwest. Another thing to know is your, your county boundaries and your parish boundaries. This is for, very important when, we, um, when you're tracing your ancestors on their trip, um, following their footsteps. It's important to understand where the records might be. So make sure you know your boundaries. And, and parish records are phenomenal. We found a ton of information in parish records. So when, when researching, just start with what you know. You know, my family shared with me stories about my ancestors traveling this road, although my grandparents didn't call it the Great Wagon Road. They called it the, the road, the Carolina Road. And they had stories that they passed on to me. But take keep your stories and write it down and record it, but always start your research with what you know. What you know is fact and begin with that. That will lead you forward. And moving on, Brian says, if I get to North Carolina next summer, I would like to look you and the Great Wagon Road up. We'll do it. It would be a great experience to walk where my ancestors were. And that is something. I found the um, ancestral um, home of my fifth 
great grandfather in near Wahlberg, um, Davidson County in North Carolina. Found the location, and it is it's amazing to walk on the actual land. The people the people that own the property said, "Well, yeah, go ahead. You can." You, well, I was looking for his uh, grave site, and I asked him, "Could I walk their property?" And he said, "Sure." I I had just visited a church that was not far from that property, and um, I ended up there, and they let me walk over the backyard. There was had a little field in the back, and 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 I could just you know picture my ancestors arriving there, and okay, this is our land, and this is where we're going to build the house, and yeah, I'm planning out their lives. So it is. It's an amazing feeling, Brian. I can't wait, and anytime you want to head up to North Carolina, I'd be happy to hook up with you. That'd be great. All right. I'm looking for more comments. Nothing. Okay. We're going to share with updates then on what we've got coming up. You know, I started a little mini series covering the loyalist in North Carolina. And I did this for two reasons. First reason was I couldn't find very much information about the the loyalists themselves, their names, their families, where they lived, what they did for a living, when did they arrive in North Carolina, and I couldn't find very much information about them. There are several books written. Um, I might have a couple. I think I've shared this one with you, with you guys before. The loyalist in North Carolina during, oh, glare, and during the Revolution by Demond. That's a good book. It does have a lot of information in it, but I, I was, I didn't find enough information to uh, please me. <laughs> so I decided, I said, you know, I'm going to dig deeper while we were uh, researching about the courthouse of Richmond in Surrey County. And when I discovered Gideon Wright, I had heard of Gideon Wright before and I had re researched him before with my family files years ago. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to dig deeper on Mr. Gideon Wright. I knew that he had participated in the battle at Shallow Ford along the Yakin River in 1780. And I knew that he was a participant as well during the regulators in the Battle of Alamance during 1771. So I decided to dig a little bit deeper into all of the loyalists who were living in the Piedmont area and to see how many of them continued to live in North Carolina after the end of the Re American Revolutionary War and and how many of them left and where did they go it was speculation that Mr. Gideon Wright had traveled to Charlestown South Carolina but I have recently found information that um I don't think he ever made it there I think he was um he had filed paperwork for claims through the British to um, and had filed himself as a refugee. But I'll get more on that as the research carries through. But yes, uh, we've got more information about that, about the loyalists coming up on Piedmont Trails. And all of this will be dating to the summer and fall of 1780. And they're going to be a little mini series. They'll be consisted of articles. I may do a small podcast uh, show on it. We'll see how it goes. Through February. The other news involves the Colonial Indentured Servants Project. There's a new listing of names that are going to be appearing on the website in February. This list comes from the research over the past two years with this project, and you'll be able to view the names and additional information on the Colonial Indentured Servants Project page. So when you go to PiedmontTrails.com, look for the Colonial Indentured Servants uh, Project and click on that, and it will take you straight to the page, and you'll be able to start to see the names and more information that we have been able to come up with through the research through the past couple of years. The February schedule will be posted on the website this week, and that will, I'll include what we're going to do on the podcast for this month on there. Okay. Brian says, thank you. No, thank you. You know, all of us, it takes all of us as a as a little team, we're all little, we're all family historians. We all work together uh, for the same purpose and goal, and that's preserving our family's history. And our family's history is all of the history. It's, it's the national history. It's about them, 
American Revolutionary War history. It's about the British colonies history. It's all of it. All of it is included. Um, and it's important to preserve. It, we have to dig deeper for the records and find out everything we can about all of our ancestors. It's that important, or it is to me. Okay, so our next live stream will be February 27th, 7.30. We'll see what we'll come up with on a live stream then and see what kind of topic we come up with. Um, probably depends on what we discover with this new surprising research we've got going on with Great Wagon Road. We'll see. We'll see what comes up. But until then, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that um, you all have a great month going forward into February. And uh, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Keep sharing it and bring your friends. Uh, we'd love to have you. And hope you all have a great evening. And God bless. Mm-hmm. <laughs>